After seeing this video of Kurt from Vija Trenta Una in Buenos Aires, Argentina, I decided to find someone who can lead me around that barrio and see with my own eyes if it is really so dangerous, as he is showing. And now imagine this, with no knowledge of Spanish, almost nada, zero. We're gonna go to this slum, to one of the most dangerous vijas in Buenos Aires, Vija 31. Let's see if it's really so dangerous. It's the last day in Buenos Aires for me and I was desperately trying to get a contact with someone who can lead me towards Vija 31, but I had no luck so far and apparently yesterday I found one video where the guys were walking around Vija 31 with a local guide and I contacted them on Instagram. They replied to me with a contact and I managed to arrange a little tour right now. So we will see how it will go and what we can see inside Vija 31. All I have to do is jump on a, a sub 2 towards Retiro. As I'm leaving, luckily I'm leaving on a blue line. So from San Juan I will take a metro, which I took for quite a few times and it's pretty convenient and cheap. Just 125 pesos towards Retiro. <laughs> One thing you might notice for safety, a lot of people wear their backpacks in front so nobody can steal shit from your back. We just arrived to Retiro. Now I need to find my contact. Contact was waiting for me by the shop. Before, there was no exit. In fact, it was an idea to be able to connect with the neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. And this is very beginning and the main entrance of Vija Trenta Una. Back in the days it wasn't like that, but you can see a lot of improvement in terms of housing, pedestrian lines and so on. Yes. Since I barely speak Spanish, my conversation was mainly through Google Translate, but we had a nice chat during the tour and I got a lot of information about current condition on Vija 31. Similar to La Boca? Similar. Uh, similar. <laughs> <laughs> so, and just in front of bus station, yeah? Estación bus. Estación de Terminal de Terminal. So this is basically just the entrance to the neighborhood, which uh, isn't dangerous and a lot of people walk here just in front of the bus station and that's the main entrance and it was built just a few years ago because before that there was no exit and now so people make made it like simpler and you can see that the buildings are pretty new and airy well super colorful they look a bit prettier even than La Boca and uh, yeah so here everybody can walk you can even enter here with no problems at all by yourself and it will be fine completely fine my contact mr marco told me that the first inhabitants in vija trento were polish italian italiano polish yeah uh, si. polish yes. italians polish italians that's interesting the colors are slowly disappearing and we are slowly coming to the villa itself i can see in different types of buildings so first polish italians came to work and uh, they didn't want to go far away from the port, so that's why they stayed here. And after that, a year later, a year later, immigrants from the other parts of Argentina were coming, were starting to come to Vica Trentauna. That's an interesting system of the wires. Reminds me a little bit of Asia. That's crazy. That's more bien, like Asia. So what happened back in the days, people from all over the different countries, like Bolivia, from Argentina, from Italy, like Italian, Polish people, they just came and built up. Boliviano. Boliviano. Peruano. Paraguay. Venezuela? Venezuela? Paraguay. Muy poco. Muy poco, okay. Uruguay? 
No. No Uruguay. Oh, okay. That's so, all, yeah, the people were just coming and uh, deciding to build up these houses by themselves, as it was way easier to find a job in Buenos Aires. As you know, Buenos Aires and Argentina used to be a very wealthy country back in the days. But obviously, as they just built up by themselves, they didn't get any papers, they didn't get any like official proof of address, they just built up a house and they just lived here. That's it. We decided to grab a little food before heading around the barrio. Marco showed me around his friend's place, where they had pretty tasty Bolivian food, actually. Um, in my country we call it in Russo, in Russo, Kampot. Kampot. Kampot, yeah, Kampot. 55,000 people live in, in this neighborhood and that's a lot. So obviously not every single one do something bad. Tranquila. Vale la pena, sabor de la noche y el tema, que se de las canciones lentas, ponte pa' mí. Yeah. So in reality, oh, fireman from video, yeah? On yeah. Paris, from video, Nick, uh, sí. Lenny, yeah? Sí. sí, sí, same, same. Okay, this is only one, solo? No, allá también hay otro. Oh. Oh, no, sí. Dos. 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 So there's two fire firefighters, firefighter cars in the Viga 31. So we came under the bridge. We were actually with the Viva starts. But what people say normally, like, yes, yeah, any other part of the world, it is dangerous for people that are not from here, but that's okay. Colombia, same. I go to New York, USA, New York, Manhattan, same, same, see. Go New York Times Square. Yeah, the thing is that, the thing is that it is dangerous everywhere in the world if you don't look at yourself, if you don't, uh, if you show off, if you do some random things. But as any other part of the world, people just live their lives here and uh, people with normal lives as they're trying their best to survive in the world, especially with conditions of economy like in Argentina at the moment. Yes, obviously there is issues with the drugs and obviously there is issues with the guns, which happens mainly at night with the groups. So if you get into those groups, then you might get into troubles. But if you live your life normally, then you just live your life. And that's it. It doesn't matter if you live your life under the bridge or if you live your life in New York. Puerta Apache? Puerta Apache? No? Claro, hay otro, sí. Apache? Apache. Mucho? Barracas. Apache, mucho peligroso? En Viga 31? Uh, sí. Sí? Sí, Puerta Apache. Sí. Oh, okay. Because uh, uh, yesterday I had contact to go to Apache, but uh, the contact was busy. Work, work. So, uh, well. no contact. But I was to go to Apache. Solo? No solo, no solo, but contact, but contact, ah, okay. contact, cancel, cancel, no contact. Oh yeah. Also, this is the main. Kurt, Lenny, this. Cheers. Thank you. I can say hi Kurt, hi Lenny, hi Nick. <laughs> okay. So this is the main Viga 31. Okay, under the bridge. But this is... Uh, buena. I like. Uh, color, color. Many, many colors. Doesn't feel super dangerous at the moment like it is sketchy at some points but i mean it's morning and it's quiet people used to live in this place where we are standing now This is from government? Sí. Go. Sí, sí, sí. Eh, ah, talleres muy bien. educativo. Talleres educativo. Oh, small kids. Yeah? Sí, 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 sí. Yeah, good. Bueno. 
Yeah, you see government even built some places for the kids so they can spend their time playing games instead of like getting into drugs and stuff, which is good. Well, the reality is that this neighborhood, like Marco says, he doesn't think that this is the most dangerous neighborhood because one thing, that this neighborhood is located just in town center, Retiro, which is very central, central, central. And all eyes are coming to this neighborhood because so many tourists around and people around. So government improving this place slowly, slowly. Maybe you have seen some videos before and there was no football fields or some place to play for the kids. But now they do build something, they do improve, they color the buildings, they made it a bit more approachable for people, which is buena. Look at these guys, they have Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi signal for everybody. And you see improvements, like just like buildings and stuff like that. And then you have places for the kids, hangers and some other stuff. And... Uh, as Marco said, this is just a normal street where he walks every single day. And uh, I honestly, I don't know what people, what are those uh, clickbaiting YouTubers are saying that everything is super dangerous. I mean, it will be dangerous if you will do stupid shit. But if you just walk normally, you can just come buy a coffee, eat a Bolivian breakfast and uh, have a little walk. I mean, I could have come by myself and just walk like that the same way. And probably nobody would even touch me. Of course, I'm not, I don't look like super white or super British. I kind of can fit in the environment. But still, it's just a, it's just a neighborhood where people live their lives. Hi, persona, solo, easy. Come, Viga, walk, Bolivia breakfast, go. Uh, see, si. see, si. si. no problem, no problem. No yeah. Lost, maybe, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, like that, yeah, like, but uh, because too many vocalists. <laughs> but no, like you enter and you're just like fuck you, no, 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 yeah, okay, yeah, bueno, yeah. See, because all the big, big YouTuber like Nico or Kurt, they come, they. So peligroso, much, mucho peligroso, si. the most peligroso viva. Huh? That's another one. It's it's literally like a fourth or fifth football field, which I'm seeing here. Argentina, they love football. What do you? Huh. I don't know. For me, it's like a cute walk, and the look actually is I like. It. Ambulancia. Ambulancia. This ambulance. Uh, ministry? 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 Okay. But what I can say for sure that being one of the central located places in city, it is going okay. through a lot of improvements right now. Even Ministry of Education of Buenos Aires is in Viga 31 area. I would have been changed the environment, but still Viga 31. Or this is a uh, underbridge? Claro. Bridge? Sí. Ah, okay, so moved here. Sí. Okay. So if you remember, a couple of minutes ago I was under the bridge and there was a football field. So people used to live there and uh, they've been moved by government from the houses that were destroyed under the bridge to those houses. Well, I can officially say welcome to the rich side of Viga 31. And all of this is a... Uh, is a strategy move from the government of uh, Argentina, of Buenos Aires, to urbanize and make this place look a bit more tourist approaching, tourist friendly, let's say, because it's in the central. About 1,500 families are moved from under the bridge to these houses. Obviously, some places are probably still empty. It's all part of the strategy, so I can't imagine how this Vija will look like in 15 to 20 years but now the new part looks like that this is buena yeah see um very normal normal yeah. normal uh better than letonia <laughs> this uh, see see 
Са Летония, сам економи, много буена. Еми да. Да, и да... Са буена. Come on guys, how you can say that the neighborhood is super bad and the most dangerous if you have a rental bicycles by QR code? Get yourself a bicycle and have a little ride around Big Hat Trento or no? Oh damn, those YouTubers and clickbaiters, man. This is not a super dangerous place as it seems for me at least. Muy bien. This is one of the first ways. Yeah. Welcome guys to one of the first and original streets of Viga Trenta Uno. Purma Marca. This is where Viga Trenta Uno started its journey. You can see incredible amount of wires on top of me. Above me. That's insane. This is Nombre. Uh, before, yeah. I'm Casa. Casa. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. So that's already made up by government that the street is Purma Marca. Before, there was no street name. Before, it was just numbers of the houses and blocks. That's it. People made it simple. Like um, Casa Trento One, Casa Trento. Something, Casa Trento Uno, da? Casa Cinco. Vale mucho pena, media botella pensando en ti. Lengua sexual, y se te nota otro idioma. Media botella pensando en ti. I need to be a little more careful on the next street with the camera. So now we're gonna go to the main street of druggies and there will be moments where I'm not gonna be able to record because a lot of drug addicts and a lot of drug consumption and drug selling. Now this is the only one street where you gotta be a little bit more careful. Yeah, I'm not going to 
And that's how we came to the end of the most dangerous street actually. Yeah, it was a way different. Way more different than it looked like. Muy diferente, yeah. Muy diferente. Okay, so retiro. Ah, come, vamos. Vamos. Kurt, Kurt was this street, yeah? C street, but they cancel. They said no. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. We basically came to the end of Retiro, and I will record a little bit of a conclusion after that. When I will came back to San Telmo, where is my apartment? That's it. I was Marco, my let's say tour guide around Pija Trenta Una. But Ecomoto. yeah, Marco Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> well, we came to the end of this episode. I'm back to San Telmo which is not super safe in the evenings as well as every other neighborhood in Buenos Aires. What can I say in my experience? It was a pretty interesting to get to know about local culture and how they live life in Viga Trenta Uno and also to ruin some myths about that villa being super super dangerous which seems like it's not true but obviously there was a couple of streets which were dodgy, with a lot of dodgy people in there. But other than that, like, come on guys, you, you might see those streets everywhere in the world, it's the same thing. So, like, depends how you introduce yourself to the place, then everything will show off. I hope you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, comment down below. And if ever you will end up in Buenos Aires and you will want to visit Viga, then you can contact me on Instagram and I might share with you the contact of Marco so you can experience it yourself. Well, now heading to Salta, which is the north part of Argentina, and we will see what kind of adventures it will bring to me. See you in the next episode, guys. Peace.